Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video we're going to be talking about hierarchy inside of Unity, the hierarchy window. Now in this window, you set up scenes, and then contained in those scenes are game objects, which may also contain child game objects. So you can see that parent-child relationship here with my combat manager, which contains three child game objects, move space, base, enemy spawn, and hero. And then the scene up here at the top, uh, usually indicated by the unity symbol um, is basically there and with those scenes you can drag those into your project folder to basically be as a scene prefab and your game objects can also be a prefab that you store in your project uh, now what I mean by a prefab is basically a preset list of settings which tells Unity how to instantiate something like a game object or to have your scene load. Basically all the settings in your scene are all the settings of a game object. Now these game objects aren't always enemies or projectiles or anything you would physically see. They can also just be uh, basically a transform uh, component that also has a bunch of scripts attack attached to it and then those scripts often in Unity mono behavior scripts uh, it performs certain functions that allow you to game to do what it's supposed to do. Now, without talking too much about game objects and transforms and those kind of things just yet, let's just talk about uh, how you position things within your scenes in the hierarchy. So, you can add new game objects by right-clicking on the scene and go to Game Object, Create Empty, or you can use a couple of preset settings. And, for instance, if you do a 2D object sprite, you'll see here that it creates a game object, but it also puts a sprite renderer on top of that. And a sprite renderer, well, as you might imagine, is how you would display sprite graphics like this, PNG files, that sort of thing. But at the basic level, a empty game object contains nothing more than a transform, which is going to be basically a point in space with rotation and scale as well um, that everything else under here will operate from. Uh, one way of thinking about the transform is just where is it located. Now if you'd rather not add a game object straight to the scene but you actually want to make a new game object become a child of a parent game object, you can right click on an object and create empty, which is going to create an empty game object as a child of that parent. Uh, now basically when it comes to game objects and parent-child relationship, what matters is that the child game objects, their position is actually referencing the parent game object position. So for instance, if I take this game object, you can see uh, basically a circle indicating where it's at, move that over to 7, and then I click on this game object, the child, it says position 0, 0, 0, but what that actually means is it's right on top of where the parent game object is. So if I want to move the child game object with reference to that, I can do basically 1x, which will move it one unit over to the right. And as you can see, the first game object is at position 7, but this is one unit over to the right, which really puts it at position 8. And to prove that, I'll change the parent game object to position 6, and the child moves to position 7 because it's one to the right offset from the original parent game object. Uh, now, for certain things like animations, um, that can be important. But for right now, just keep in mind that parent-child relationship uh, is going to include that. Um, now, it can also be important for other things uh, that we'll be talking more about later, like sending messages. You can have a parent game object if it has a mono behavior script attached do things like send a message to all of its children game objects uh, to let them know that some event in the game has happened. But don't worry about that too much yet. Um, one of the more important things is just about how you want to organize how your scene set up here. So if you want things to be directly related to the parent, like you might want a projectile to be under an enemy, um, then making those projectiles children of the parent may make sense. One more thing to keep in mind is that Positioning on the hierarchy can matter when it comes to what gets displayed in front of each other. And that's most notice, uh, noticeable with canvases specifically. So if I double click on the fight canvas, you'll see that it zooms out way far from the actual uh, game area to the canvas because they're kind of separate things. And in this canvas, 
uh, you can basically put UI elements. So you can think of the canvas just as the UI. And uh, let, let's do an example over here. So we'll go over here to the health slider I have here. And we have different components of the game object. So if I try to do something like, so if I try to do something like take the health count and I move that upwards, You'll notice that it shows on top of the slider itself. But if I move this above uh, the, the slider area, or the fill area rather, it actually puts it behind that on the UI. So the positioning of your items inside of the canvas can matter. So just keep that in mind for the future. Uh, so one more thing for this video is that you can have multiple scenes loaded up in the hierarchy at the same time. You don't always have to have every scene in your game located inside of the hierarchy, and you definitely don't have to have multiple scenes loaded. In fact, you probably shouldn't have multiple scenes loaded at the same time because, well, when a scene's loaded, that means that scripts are going to be running. Um, but if you want to switch between scenes and you have your scenes contained, contained in your assets folder, you can drag those up here into the hierarchy, go to the scene you want to edit currently, and you can right click and go to load scene. And then for the scene you're done editing, you can right click that and hit unload scene or remove scene if you want to remove it from the hierarchy entirely. So now we can go over to this scene. So once you've loaded up your scene, you can click on the game objects in the hierarchy. And if you double click, it'll take you straight to where they're located. And you can continue editing uh, basically your game as you want. So hopefully the main things you're taking away from this video is that your hierarchy contains your scenes and those scenes contain game objects, which can be enemies, projectiles, or even just a big list of scripts that happen to have a specific location within your game. But remember that just because a game object has a transform position doesn't mean it's actually relevant. If it's invisible, it's invisible. And finally, that your game objects can contain children game objects, which will be important for positioning and organization of your game as you progress in Unity. So that's going to be it for this video. Until my next one, I'll see you then.